Hello and welcome back. It's puzzle time with Sudoku Sleuth and we've got an absolutely fantastic puzzle for you today. Now I know I can say that because it's another puzzle, another highly rated puzzle I should say really, from Willpower. Um, I don't know how you're doing it Mr. Willpower. It's at 94% rating. Absolutely incredible that you're releasing 90% plus rated puzzles almost every three days. So just Phenomenal, and I'm really looking forward to it. Now, the name of the puzzle is Coin Sorting Machine. Um, for the younger viewers amongst you, and I know that there isn't that many of you on this channel, but there are some. You know, back in the day, you used to actually have to pay vending machines with coins. Now, if I look at my vending machine in the office that I actually use sometimes, uh, there isn't even a coin hole anymore. You actually just have to use um, like a contactless payment on it. But yeah, it used to be that you actually had to pay with coins and then inside it, you had a mechanism to basically sort out the coins by weight and size. And I think magnetism, or am I making this up? To basically figure out that yes, this is a genuine coin and you know it's crediting this much towards your favorite drink of choice. So enough of the thumbnail, enough of the story. Let's take a look at the puzzle. So we have, and Pardon me, let me just click resume here. Vending machine coin sorting by willpower. I think I've told you all of that already. And we've got the following set of rules. Although even before I take a look at the rules, you can almost sort of see the coin sorting part. If you think about each of these circles being a coin and these arrows being their trajectory somehow, it's almost as if you put the coin in there's some magic sorting thing in there, and then it will credit to you, I guess, some numbers, some digits. It's almost sort of describing what it's meant to be doing. Well, anyway, rule sets. So we've got normal Sudoku rules apply. So that means the digits one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box, fairly standard. Numbers on arrows sum to the numbers in the arrows circle. So if we take this arrow, for example, you know, the trail of that coin that is following, we've got these four cells must add up to a value, and I should say a single digit value that will be placed in the circle. And we've got quite a few of these four cell arrows, so they're not going to be exactly easy to do um, to be able to get to only one digit. And clearly box five, you know, there's mayhem in here, there's just everything. So there's a lot of pressure that we're going to have to take a look at here in a moment. It does say all arrows are straight. So, you know, these arrows are as such, excuse me. Um, it is not, for example, turning, you know, this particular circle is not turning as follows. Okay. Numbers in cages, sum to 10. We've got a 10 cage here, a 10 cage there, 10 there, etc. And all that really means is if this cell, for example, was a three, this would have to be a 7 to allow it to add up to 10. So the sum of these two cells must be 10. And yeah, they're all basically clustered around box 5. Um, they're not anywhere else on the, on the puzzle for some reason. Let's see, what else do we have? Numbers in white dots between them are consecutive. Um, you know, when I was looking at this earlier, we've got a massive long chain here. So to give you an example, if this cell was... If this was a four, then these two cells must be consecutive. So it would have to be from three or five, for example. Three or five, not four or five. So that they are one away from the four. What else do we have? Um, we've got black Kropke dots. So numbers with black dots between them are in a ratio of two to one. So for example, if this cell is a four, then these two must be in a ratio of one to two away. So this could be a two or they could be an eight. And obviously because they're in different boxes, they could actually be the same digit, for example. Now, important here is not all possible dots are given. So negative constraints do not apply basically on anything that we're looking at right now. Well, if you've never played with an old vending machine, if you've never seen how it does the magic of coin sorting, you're welcome to play along with the link in the description down below as per usual. And with that said, let me restart the clock and see how I get on. So 
I think I've said this many times, black crop key dots. Although, you know, I will come back to box five because I can place, actually, I will do that. It's very rare that you can get to place a digit immediately in the puzzles that we featured on this channel, but here is one in under 20 seconds. Because all of these 10 cages are essentially covering all of box five, I can never put a five in any of them because what it's saying by implication, if I remove that five for a second is, that's five, well, to get to 10, that's another five. So even if it's not in the same box, what am I doing here? There. Whoa. What am I doing? Stop it. There. Even if I put a five in here, that's still requiring another five in the same column and the same here as well. So I can't put a five in any of these cages. The only cell where I can put a five is this one in here. Right. Now, where was I? So black crop key dots. Whenever I see a run of three or more in the same box, I immediately, it immediately just catches my attention. Because when you think about black crop key dots, they are either one, two, four, and eight. You can essentially have like a series of these. Um, you know, one times two to get to two, times two to four, times two to get to eight. Three or six, and I thought I fixed these disappearing lines, but apparently not. And then finally, five, seven, and nine. Now, the key thing here is that if you've got more than two in the same box or in the same column, it can't be three, six, because, you know, imagine that's a three, that's a six. What am I going to place in here? Because I'm going to end up having to repeat the three and the six. I've really butchered this puzzle. So this can only be one, eight on the outside or two, four in the middle. And it's essentially either one, two, four, eight, or the reverse of that, one, two, four, eight. Doesn't tell us a lot more, so I'm fairly sure I'm gonna to have to take a look at this coin sorting machine in box five. Well, maybe just quickly this run of six cells. So this is either one through to six, or three, no, four through to nine. The one and eight is actually quite interesting because if this is an eight, it is you know, restricting this huge amounts. So whilst I can't exactly figure out, what I do know though, let me think about this is, because I said it's one to six or, so I know four, five and six are definitely in here. And I've already placed one, eight, two and four in there. So what are these? I mean, they can be nine, they could be eight, they could be seven, they could be, they're not one, they're not two. So this is from three, seven, and nine. Because four and five and six have to be in there. Two can't be in here. So actually two is definitely in here. Yeah, because I can't place it in these three cells. And because two is in there, I think nine can't be in here, and I'm fairly sure, even if that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, that has to be an eight. So eight is not here. Three, because two is in there, is not there. So this is a run of, yeah, let me just show you what this is. So this is a run of um, one through to six. I don't know if I articulated this particularly well. I'm hoping that's not too confusing. In essence, because two is not in these three cells, it meant that I needed to place two in this group. Now, even if I had a two in here, at the very edge, three, four, five, six, seven, it meant that the absolute maximum I can make this was two to seven, and therefore eight also had to be in here. But because I had one and eight already pencil marked, this had to be the eight and this has to be the one. Um, and then the question was essentially whether this is three or seven. Clearly now that I have nine and eight in here and I have the two in there, 
I needed the three to be in a run in there and this had to be the seven. So I hope that's reasonably clear. I don't know if I actually made it worse trying to explain it in that much detail. But a lot more digits certainly in the, in the last few minutes. I think this is probably as far as we're going to be able to go without taking a look at the coin sorter in box five. Now, I'll tell you what's coming to mind when I look at box five is the way to think about tens is it's made up of a low digit and then a high digit. Remember, if there's no fives, it's essentially going to be a digit from one, two, three, and four joined with its opposite to get to 10. So if it's four, it's six. If it's three, it's seven, two, eight, one, and nine. Now, the question that I'm sort of thinking out loud about is these intersection points, which I'm going to color for now a neutral color, I feel reasonably confident is all the high digits. Reasonably confident, not 100% confident. Sorry, did I say high digits? Low digits is what I meant to say. And the reason I say that is let's use, I'm going to actually turn them blue when I confirm that it has to be low. So the lowest high digit I can put in here is a six. If I put a six in here, I still have another three cells that I need to cover. And all of these would have to be one to allow me to get to a single digit number in here. And they're already adding up to a nine, which can't be on a black crop key dot. So this is absolutely not a six. This has, well, I say six, it's not high digit because, it, you know, if I put a seven in here, I've broken it because it will, min, it will sum up to a minimum of 10. You know, seven plus three ones will get me to 10. This will break the puzzle. So this is definitely a low digit. And therefore, this is definitely a high digit. I'm going to remove all the ones now. Next on the list. Now, clearly two digits here, but let me let me work through it a little bit more. So if this is six, all of these are ones. But again, black crop key dot, this cannot be a nine. That is definitely another low digit and therefore that's another high digit. I think the same could be said of that, isn't it? Even if that's six, that's three ones, that's back to nine. Yep. Right. This one. Let's try. That can't be a one. We've already placed the one in here. So the minimum this could be is a two, one, one, we're at ten, we've broken the puzzle. This also has to be a low digit. Right, so we placed all the low digits. We know that all of these are high digits. That's some neutral color, that, so therefore this is a low digit. I'm kind of wondering if this is also true when it extends outside of the coin sorter, if that makes sense. As in these intersection points, I'm not sure that's true. I want to just think about this for a second. If this is high, again, this would be a six. I think that's the same issue because of these black crop key dots. So if that's six, that's one, that's two, because it's in the same box, that's already at nine, 10, that can't be a six either. I'm using six constantly because it's the lowest high digit. Um, I think we have a similar challenge in here. If that's a six, even if these are ones, which they can't be because of this one, um, so that would be one, that would be two, we're already at nine, that's a 10, that has to be low as well. What about this one? That's six, that's one and two, that's already nine, that's a 10, that's low as well. This one, yeah, anything basically where I've got a run of two is going to be the same challenge because that's one, two, that's three, as in that would be three, that's four, plus a six would break it, so that's also low, that's also low, we've got a run of two. What about this one? Yep, yeah, run of two in box six, meaning this is also low. 
And I think that gives us the order. Because if this is one, two, and three, I've got three blues plus another three blues. I've got six. I've definitely broken the puzzle. So this is the only way round this can be. And therefore, this is the last low. That's some neutral color. This is high. I don't know if I'm going to continue with coloring as such, but for the moment, this is actually proving useful. So I'm not going to stop just yet. I've got all the lows done. This is therefore highs. Um, this is not four or six. I mean, I let me just do that instead. One, two, three, that's not a two. Uh, this is seven, eight, nine. And therefore, this is one, two, or three as the complement of the seven, eight, nine. Okay. That's also one, two, three. There's a four looking at it. It's a very long way of trying to figure out what the digits are in here, but it may be the path that we're being put on. Again, a four is looking at this. This is one, two, or three. This is actually relatively high. So that's three, four minimum, four plus another three. So this is seven or eight or nine. It can only be an eight because it's on a black crop key dot. Seven and nine doesn't work in here. Therefore, this has to be a four. This can't be a two, so it's back up to eight. Fantastic. I wasn't expecting to be able to resolve it this easily, but I am not complaining. Right, I've said if they have a run of two, if these were one, two, and that's one, we are already at four, and therefore these intersections have to be low. Same deal here, this intersection has to be low. In fact, does all of it have to be low? One, yeah, if this is six, three, yeah, so it doesn't matter if it's an intersection or not. If there is two cells in the same, if it's four cells long in the arrow and two of them are in the same box, they all have to be low. And I think that's true in here as well. If that's six, that's one, two, that's one, we've broken it, that's also low. Have I colored all the arrow cells? I think I have. We're kind of done with coloring for a bit. I think the tricky part now is to figure out, you know, some actual digits. So that's one, two, three, which means this is seven, eight, or nine. Not learning huge amounts in here, if I'm honest. Um, I've done the black crop key dots. This is also one, two, or three, because there is a four in here. So let's think about this for a second. Yeah, one, two, one, two. That's the absolute lowest. That has to be a high digit. That's seven, eight, or nine. That's another low digit. And I'm trying to figure out which one of these two is the four. And I'm just trying to figure out if I can get to eight without the four. And I'm pretty sure the answer to that is yes. Because I've got, you know, total freedom in all of these three cells. One, two one and three so that's four that's seven minimum here is seven in fact that's seven nine another pair with this one so it's kind of helpful but not not helpful enough if i can figure out where the last remaining high would be you'll be able to tell me if this is sorry low digit i'll know if this is a four or not that's a four. If I have a four in any of these arrows, how much of a problem is it? Especially with an intersection as well. So four, one, we're at five. One, two, that's three and five, that's eight. 
course it could be a 9. I could have 4 with a 2, of course 6, and 1 and 2 to get to 9. Yeah, not enough. What I do know, though, is all of these cells are high. None of them can add up to anything less than 6. This one as well. Now, this is on a black crop key dot. And there's only two of these. It's either six or eight. But look at this three. That's six. That would be three. And we've broken the puzzle. So that's eight. That's four, which is very helpful because it tells me these are ones and twos. Also tells me there's a four somewhere in here. For such an easy start, I'm getting stuck a lot. I'm, ha I'm really having to think hard about this one. Not a bad thing at all. It's, you know, almost something you expect from a willpower puzzle, but I still just haven't quite cracked what's going on in here. I think once I do, it will just become a much easier puzzle. So I don't think any of these are low. Why do I think that? So these two, even if I have a low digit in here, four, the next one would be a five and that will break. And obviously I can't have four and three because then I would end up with five blue cells. So I'm fairly sure all of these are red. I'm so tempted to say all of these are red too, but four, five is actually absolutely fine because I don't have five elsewhere in this row. Oh, can't be four here. And if it's four there, I've broken it because somehow I'm meant to be a high digit in here. So these are not low. Unfortunately, I can't actually confirm that there isn't a five in here. There's definitely no 5 in there, because that would mean there's a 6 and a 4 in here, breaking this 4. But I could do 6, 5, 6, presumably. So yeah, I can actually have a 5 in here as well, unfortunately. Eight. Yeah, this is this one is tricky because it's got only three cells. This is the sole exception. They all have four cells, except for this one. And therefore, this can actually be, I'm not even sure this has to be high, because I could have one, two. This can actually be a five, surprisingly enough. It's not four, though. So, I mean, you could have had one, two to get to three and another one to get to four. And four would be the minimum. It's just we've already placed it in here. So that's not a four. But it can be as little as five. Right. I feel like I need a more of a plan. What am I not seeing about this puzzle? In. That's not eight, that's not two. Kind of grimacing there, thinking that's not hugely helpful. I mean, it would be very helpful to know if this is the six and this is the four, because that would create a seven nine pair. And therefore, one of these is six. In fact, it's not that one because that would require a four. So, where can six be? Six can be in either of these and can be in either of, and four in either of these. Nowhere else can be a six. Do I really want to sort of eliminate where the fours can be? I think this, this just feels like where I should be paying attention. One, two, one, two. So the black crop key dot really helped here, but like I'm basically done with them. 
Actually, can this be a 7? If this is 7, these two continuous ones would become 8 and 9. Then I'd require to put a 6 in here and the 4 up there. This is not a 7. That's a 9. I can put a 6 in here. I've got to place it in there with another red one. So that's 6 and 7. That's 8. That's 2. That's very hard to spot. I don't even know if that's on the solution path, but that is, that is incredibly hard to spot. And therefore, this is a high, sorry, a low digit. That wasn't a 4. That wasn't a 4, because that would require a 6 in here, which we already placed. That's not a 4. This is the 4. And therefore, 3. Neither of these are 3. That's a 1-2 pair. That's lovely. I could have a 3 in here, or obviously up there. But 1-2 is it's nice to be sort of restricting these a bit more. That's a 3. I've got a 1-2 pair here in this row now. That's a 7. That's a 9. That's an 8. This is now 6 or 7. It's not 7. The fact that I have the 3 here means the 7 can no longer be in either of these. That's the 7. That's the 3. I need now 6 and 9. I know where the 9 is. That 9 is in here. That's the 6. That's the 4. That's not the 4. This is the 4 now. Um, this is a 1. This is a 2. This is a 1. Well, that these weren't 1 for a while now. And there we go. Really? That was the way to spot this? I mean, I'm missing something. Right, 1, 2, 3, that's a 6 adding up to an 8. That's another 2. That's a 1. That hopefully adds up to 9. That looks like it does, yep. Three threes in a way. Essentially 3, 3, 3. Yeah, looks good. Uh, 4 plus 5. And this is 3 or 4. It's actually a 4 and a 9. I've already said it can't be an 8. It had to be a 4. Pretty good. Look at this 3 telling us there's a 3 in here. There's a 5, 8. We know where the 8 is. That's the 8. That's the 5. I mean, we're pretty much sold it at this point, I believe. That's... That's 9. I was going to say 4, yeah, 7, 9. Have I sold all the circles? That's also 9. I wasn't expecting that. And I think that's all the arrows. Nope, one more. We got five and nine and four. That's another nine as well. Fantastic. Right, no sevens in here. How about I just do some easy things first? We've got six and seven in here. This is the five. Come on, let's do the hard ones first. That's the more enjoyable part. I did say that this could have been a 5, so this could still be 5, 6, 7. That, surprisingly, can actually still be 6, so 5 is actually still completely viable. Well, adjacent to the 6 and 7 is 5, 6, not 7, but could be an 8. If that's an 8, though, 7, 8, that could be a 9, technically. So it could be six, seven, eight, nine. Could be seven, six, not seven again, seven, six, five, and then six again. How is this six, six, seven, six? The six, this can't be a six because this cannot be five or seven. And because this cannot be a six, that doesn't really say anything. So it's seven, six, five, or six seven eight and it continues with a climb or descent really does it seven six five it doesn't go forward it goes back up or six seven eight it doesn't descend it goes back up to a nine 
continues up, I should say. Um, we've restricted it, but it doesn't. it's not actually solved. Well, this is a four for sure, just to complete this row. We need a nine, which can only be in here, because you can see we've already placed a nine in this box. That has to be nine, therefore, that's eight, that's seven, that's six. Um, I can remove the gray flash in here. I need five and six to finish this up. I need six and seven to finish this up. I know what this digit is. It is a three. I should know all of these. These are five sixes and sevens. And I can't resolve any of them, unfortunately. But what I can do is eliminate a few options. That's not seven, that's not five, etc. Not hugely helpful, that's six or seven. Right, how about we actually try and solve this puzzle rather than just randomly pencil marking. What do we have in here? We need an 8 somewhere. That's got to be the 8. Uh, this has to be the 6. Therefore, this is a 7, the 6, the 5, the 7. We know what these are. This is 7 and 5. We don't actually know what they are. What about these two? We need a 1. And a six, it seems. These two. We need a six and seven, it seems. It's a very odd setup. I need a one in here. Joint with either a five, six or seven. I need to have a 5 in here to join the 1. Yeah, this has to be 1, 5. Why am I saying that is I've already placed 6 and 7s. I can't have a third 6 or 7. And I need a 1 in this column. It can only be in here. So that's, therefore, this is the 6, the 7, the 6, the 5. Um, we need 7 and... Three, I believe we actually know no I've broken something I do need a seven back up back up back up back up right let's try that again I've already got a seven that's a six that's a five I don't need a five in here what am I missing two it seems and that's the six that's the seven I need a three and five. Three is not in here, that's a five, that's a three. And we need something to finish this row. Two, we need two more digits in here. Three, I know where the three goes, thankfully, and the five, which will resolve everything. Brilliant. There we go. It's a phenomenal puzzle. Absolutely stunning puzzle. I, I can see why it's 94% rating. I just, I don't know how you construct these absolutely magical puzzles, willpower. Just the amount of tension that's in here that, I don't know if this was the way to solve it, this six, seven setup. But you know, once you you know, once you get a break in into box five, just everything unravels very quickly. Um, I don't know if there's another way of entering it. I think it, this has to be the way because the Kropke dots are basically the way to sort of help you resolve all of this tension around it. Um, but I hope that you guys have enjoyed this puzzle and this video half as much as I did, or at least half as much, because that would just mean you're over the moon. I think it was a fantastic puzzle. Hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, let me know in the comments and uh, see you back for the next one. Bye for now.